So let's do a round. I learned something from Ruth, who was the, the workshop host for last week. And uh, she did this beautiful thing where she invited all of us to say something before she did the talk. And I thought, okay, maybe we also do something like that today. Um, so to find out what one word comes to your mind when you read this topic that we're going to go into. So stress, anxiety, and burnout, just one word. Good. So at least one way or the other, we sort of associate something for whatever reason to this topic. And uh, I think it was Raria who said it's common. So yeah, let's see. Uh, Vina and I sat down, we thought, okay, this year it's been just been, you know, or last year, beginning of this year, so far it's been, uh, you know, one thing after another uncertainty I hear there, but we thought let's put something together and definitely talk about this because burnout and stress is there. It's there whether we like it or not for different reasons. So I thought I would share with you just a short story about why this topic for me personally is very important. Um, and then based on research that I have done and also the work that Vina does, we would like to share with you some definitions so that you know that there's a scientific in here, so it's not just we cooking up things. And then um, a kind of um, thought process that at least has worked for me on how uh, one navigates a uh, stressful situation, especially a toxic, stressful situation. And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, why create balance, how you create balance. And it starts with that self-awareness. And then we'll go into the conversation. So we hope looking for like 15, max 20 minutes of this workshop before we go into the common discussion, okay? So yeah, um, my story. Um, why did stress become important to me? It's, it's because um, of this image. That's me lying down with my son who is wearing the blue uh, blazer uh, standing next to me, looking at me with my torn belly. Uh, with wounds because I've just uh, come out of surgery uh, for a ruptured appendix. And uh, prior to this, I really didn't notice something was going on with me internally. But, um, and even when this picture was taken, I didn't think much about it. But weeks afterwards, I realized just how close I was to dying and how I took a lot of things like, oh, I should just keep doing what I need to do. Because about one and a half years before this incident, I was working on a project where I thought I'll just give it all, my, give it my all. That was expected of me. I'll work long hours. I will um, uh, even bring work home. Sometimes I bring the kids during the weekend. When they, when I take them for activities, I will take my laptop with me and try and finish up what I need to do. All this while thinking that's what work is. The working mom uh, should do. Uh, balance was certainly far away from anything I was thinking. But when this is incident happened, I really had to take a lot of things into perspective. And one thing I, that I was left with was realizing I do have my limits. And I have my limits, particularly when it comes to work and uh, what I call my career, how to manage that. Because I hadn't given any room for hobbies, any interests. Um, I'm a Christian. I... Sometimes I would think about oh, those, I'll see to that some other time. And um, just having quality time at home was, uh, was very rare. So it, it was a sad moment, but I tell you, I learned a lot about myself and uh, it has enabled me even because I realized I didn't have, I wasn't engaged in my interest and my passion. It was one of the reasons why I started my business called Unique Blends. It gave me the opportunity to tap into my creative self. And um, it's led me on a journey of sustainability to discover my real passion. So I'll come back to this topic of identifying, you know, one's limits, but that's what tripped me into getting really in, interested in this topic of, of stress, I will say. Later on, anxiety came in and then burnout, okay? 
So, oh, sorry. See, I skipped the page. So we want to share some definitions, right? Um, when you see this image, and thought this was a very lovely image I saw somewhere. Um, the, the match is, is, is lit, the matchstick is lit, and it does have some, you know, it's giving up some, some light. And at that moment, you can imagine if you transfer the, the, the match light to something else, it can ignite something else. But of course you feel, I'm sure that stick is feeling something. And if left for a while, you see what's happening. It's, the light goes off, the stick itself reduces, and it uh, diminishes. There's that idea of reduction, uh, and it lights, darkness. And this is what I thought really <laughs> stipulates what happens during burnout. So there's a pr kind of a, a pressure. I'll just put in the last, the next, um, tree, um, uh, how do I put it, flow, flow process. Where something happens, there's a pressure built up, you light the match, and then that generates the light, you know, something is burning, stress, and it left on for a while, not to do it, you don't light, uh, transfer it to maybe light a candle, put the candle on. What happens is you, you just, you, you're burning a bit. So that's a feeling, if you will, when we come to the next slide, you'll see, but you'll see anxiety are really linked to feelings. And you become anxious about something whatever it is, but the definition hopefully becomes clearer. And if left on, just going on without, you know, putting off that lit much, you get eventually burnt out. And it actually goes on to depression. But we thought for the sake of this presentation or for this conversation, let's just stick with the point of burnout because um, it's, really, it's really a fine line between when you burnt out to getting depressed, to chronic depression, it's, it really can go, go on. And it's not perhaps something we can cover in this uh, uh, room here on, the, on this topic of stress, anxiety, and burnout. So it's an external pressure. You have a stress, you get anxiety, you get anxious, and there are various ways of feeling this anxiety, and then you get burnout. So it would be nice to keep that image of the matchstick because I think it might help in also considering the definition. Stress, uh, which is a lovely definition that Green actually shared, is a response to an identifiable situation. And, and, and when that pressure, you know, you feel um, maybe um, upset or nervous or worried, that's the anxiety. That's the feeling coming in. And for some people, this can be on a daily basis. Now, what I love about what Raria said is it's common, it's normal. We may perhaps just don't talk about it enough. But stress and anxiety are a fact of life. There's something that's part of the normal human emotion. It's there. The anxiety, being anxious is part of what we experience every day. Uh, I give an example of an external pressure. You're going to go for an interview. You want to, you, 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 you anxious about what that will be. So that's the pressure of the interview. The stress is preparing for it, perhaps. You're like, well, I need to do that. I need to do this besides my daily things. And the feeling you allow yourself to sit with it can look, in can look differently for everyone because we're all wired differently. We're all unique in the way we perceive things. And um, it might not even be as big as an interview. Maybe like you lose your car keys, for instance, or you, um, there's, a, there's an identifiable reason why you become anxious. Remember, pressure, stress, anxiety, right? Normal. It's a normal part of life. And what the uh, experts really are encouraging is that we should start, we should actually use this word as part of life because it's a, it's, it's a good thing to recognize that you have this light lit, remember the matchstick, giving you some kind of energy. It allows you to have this alertness. Oh, I'm feeling something here. Yeah? It allows you to then if used well, you can take that to something positive, okay? Now, anxiety disorders, which might sound quite negative, um, we don't put it here because we want to put it as something negative. We just want to say that it's something different. It's different in that most of the time, it's not something you can immediately say, this is the reason why I'm anxious, but that you are anxious. 
you are stressed and anxious about, you just can't pinpoint what it is. And you're constantly having this without having this physical, either external, internal identifiable reason. You are constantly anxious for, a, you know, it becomes part of life that maybe it becomes even normal to you. So we say here, it's, it's a different um, topic and it's not what we're gonna address in this conversation, but it's highly relevant, of course, if you are um, prone to being anxious without having the reason of why you're being anxious, you would want to, you know, at least accept that something is happening with you and maybe speak to a specialist just to get help because it's important. And before I go, I just want to touch base with Vina. Am I still, have I missed anything in terms of definition of stress, anxiety in normal? You're doing and great. Uh, you're yeah, doing great. Right. Right. I probably wanted to just add in uh, a trauma response because we are talking about external things that can make us stressful, but there could be things from the past that's internalized that can cause us stress and anxiety at different points in our life. It can come as a sudden, you know, something could trigger it and then it happens. So there is a trauma response and I think that falls under the uh, disorders, anxiety disorders. So probably we won't talk about it in this session today, the trauma response. Uh, but if you want to talk about it or you you feel that has been your experience, I, I would be happy to talk. Uh, I know there are some other mental health professionals here in this forum. I know Ravia is also a, you know, uh, a coach. So if you feel like you want to talk about it, you feel that this is not my experience, it's a little bit different. I'm happy to talk about it later on. Yeah, that's that's what I wanted to say. Go on, Christy. All right. Thanks, Vina. Now, burnout is... You know, because I, I was so curious about burnout and it's something people constantly say. And actually, um, in the course of the last one year, um, I've had three project managers in my you know, company just burned out, burnt out. It was one of the reasons why I got even assigned to the project uh, I was working on because the project manager got burnt out. So I thought I would like to know what this word is. And apparently there's a clear scientific definition. There's a clear way to measure you about and then say oh yes you are burnt out and it's done by this love lady in 1981 christina mashlak um, who defined burn three criteria you are overextended you are constantly just exhausted with no energy you are inefficient you're not able to produce any good work and it's very obvious to you and that can be work at home um, in your business until they just your corporate work, anything. And I think the third one is now burnout has to meet all these three criteria. It has to be a yes, yes, yes for all these three for you to be completely, you know, that curved matchstick, light all gone, completely reduced, then you're burnt out. And this is an extreme situation because past the stage you go into something really um even wor more worse i can't imagine what can be worse than this physically mentally emotionally <laughs> you're gone but i think most people tend to um experience two one or two of these things for a long duration of time and then think that they are burnt out that's not the case and i think for me it was good because at the point i was thinking uh, at work I've been on this project, this was just last year. This project, am I constantly exhausted? You know, um, am I burnt out? No, I saw this definition, I thought I'm not, I can diagnose my stressful, negative stressful situation. It is different, very different. Um, is my disconnected? Do you still hear me please? Okay. Um, it says, uh, this is completely different from everyday normal stress of, oh, I don't, what am I gonna make for dinner? Uh, or, or someone is running late for a meeting. Those are stressful moments, but that's part of your normal psych. But when you have this negative stressful situation where you feel, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm more here, it's a trigger sign that you wanna really sit up and do something before you come to that burnt match stick where you burnt out. And I talk, it's important that we have these definitions and more importantly, the awareness, awareness of 
our feelings when we're anxious. That's what we wanted to share with you on definitions. These are all from scientific uh, background saying, this is how you want to identify certain things or give yourself a definition to work with. And then Vina came up help to uh, say, okay, now, you know, yes, stress is part of life. You have this anxiety about whatever it is, because we're all different. Some things will make us anxious and for other people it won't. So how do you stay afloat? Because that's the question or that's the theme we have for, for this year, right? Creating balance. Uh, and particularly during the pandemic, we are thrown with all manners of actually going to be my segment. Um, so when we talk about stress, anxiety, burnout, you know, the, the whole feeling is how do we respond to those situations, right? It is, we understand it is every day, it is common. Uh, it is not something that we can avoid. Uh, I view it like this, you know, this is this ball that floats with us. Let's say life is like this water and two things can happen. Either you could you could have a storm come in the water. There's, there's something that happens in your life unexpectedly, and then everything goes, uh, uh, you know, the, the balance is challenged there. That can happen. Or something in yourself can be triggered, causing you to feel anxious. So most of the times what we try to do is we try to push this ball under the water and think of it like it does not exist. Right. I, I want to push away my emotions. I want to push away the way I feel. I feel overwhelmed. I feel emotional. There's a bodily response as well to stress. Um, you can feel it in your stomach. It depends on on different people. You know how they respond. You can have a heavy heartbeat for some people. They can sweat. There is a bodily response definitely to stress and in a long term basis, when people go through anxiety, they can even uh, have um, health issues because of this. One thing I wanted to um, help you remember with this picture here is when you have the ball, learn to leave the ball afloat. Don't try to suppress it or pressure it. Imagine you're having a ball in the swimming pool and you're trying to push the ball under the water. You have to give so much more pressure in your hand to do it and then after a while you cannot do it and what happens it's physics right bio and c it just the ball just spurts out right and then everything goes out of control now that is something we don't want to get into i think the first step in handling stress is being aware that there's something wrong i'm not feeling okay there's something happening now acknowledging the ball and allowing it to float with you right so that the first step is self-awareness there and and not trying to ignore or suppress what you're going through it's very very important that's that's the first thing that we want to say in terms of handling stress you're back christy yes right? <laughs> don't know where i got dropped off but yeah please the next slide thanks there you go so I, I read this book uh, maybe two or three years ago on conscious, and it was really what helped me to uh, sort of normalize stress and anxiety. And it says, you know, stress and anxiety, like we said, it's part of life. No, the, the good one, not the negative, toxic one. I hope I hope I was able to still be live and share the definition, but okay. Um, it just made me realize it's part of life, right? But what is what is what is um, uh, important is not that you haven't are you stressed or anxious it's more how you navigating it how you addressing it and what this book did was it says well of course there, there, there's, a, there's a wide spectrum yeah but there's one way where we say okay well you know we, we rather ignore it and that's complacency you're not engaged with what's going on with you you sort of in denial i rather not accept what's happening or the other thing is you're overwhelmed someone gave that word today um, it's too much, you know, and that just becomes chaos. You're not going to be productive with that elite match that has some fire burning. But what you want to do is face it and engage with it. And it can look differently for everybody. So that's why I put a question mark there. That's for you to think about. What does your own face, uh, your anxious face look like when you are looking at this issue and you say, yes, I'm going to tackle it. Now, okay, Vina. 
So just think about it. There are different ways you can um, address. What is most importantly important is that you do not want to get overwhelmed by your, your situation that you consider stressful. You want to face it. You want to give it, um, you want to engage with it and accept that there's something sitting with you here. And um, so while I read Conscious two or three years ago, it helped me at that point. But this year, when I was tackled, uh, faced with this uh, situation of, okay, this is uh, another challenging project and it's not getting any uh, better. I told myself, okay, I've been with it now for close to a year. So in the new year, which is 2021, when it starts, I do not want to do this project anymore. That's what I told myself. Uh, but certain things happened that even I, it, become, it became even worse. The management was also complaining about, oh, you're now becoming inefficient with your project. So I had a choice, December, Christmas, to um, decide. Actually, I, I was like, I'm not going to go back to work in January. I just stopped with this project and I stopped with this company. And my husband was like, no, you're not going to do that. You still have a job. <laughs> no one told you to go anywhere. And I must tell you, the Christmas was, was challenging, but I read another book, uh, which I would share with you in, in the next slide, but it really said everything is about attitude. How do you want to operate? How do you want to engage with what's going on with you? Do you want to be fearful, filled with fear, or do you want to go with love? And it was the first time I saw these terms, not in a religious context, but really in a setting of you have this difficulty, you have this stressful situation, it's, I've accepted it, but how do I want to deal with it? Am I going to be scared of it? Or am I going to say, okay, let's, let's listen to what's going on here. L let me look at it. And love, I would show you in the next slide, um, what that does between love and fear. But what it does is, like Jenny shared in her story, you start having some thoughts, your mindset start telling you something. And if you are in a fearful mood, or in a, in a love mode, it could go in really two different extremes. So what I thought of just sharing with you here is you've accepted something is tough. You have accepted it's a stressful situation. There's a need for you to really tell yourself consciously, how are you going to operate? And it really comes down to you and your choices at the end of the day and your feelings of accepting something. So like I said, um, people see different things. You have, you're sitting with something, you're dealing with something and it's really always internal. And as we say here in She Sustains, a lot of things are internal and they're, they're, we don't see it. But what we see, I like an analogy of a tree. What we see are the fruits you, have, you start bearing. And if you're in a fearful mode, I don't know if you see this picture clear enough, it starts with your thoughts, your emotions. You, you know that you are in this stressful zone, but because you want to operate, you want to have this attitude of, I'm so, I'm so afraid, there's a lot of negativity in your own head, your own mental space. What you are then going to start reflecting, uh, what people start seeing, oh, she's angry, she's aggressive, or um, um, a lot of negative things. And it goes on and on, and it can really become even really complicated. There are terms there that I don't even understand. You know, you can get addictions just because you choose to operate internally in a, in a negative way. And what this book by Dr. Nancy Klein, Nancy Klein um, sort of really highlighted to me was we have all the tools we need, right, to navigate through something. We have our mind, our hearts, we have our brains. And if your, um, your thoughts are all about the fear mode, you're only giving yourself, you know, um, how do I put it, all these negative uh, possibilities, which people will not want to engage with. And you are even left even more isolated. Now, what she also spoke about was love. And that as human beings, we all by default operate in the love mode. What it means is that our brains are wired for love. We all crave to be positive, to be optimistic about, about things, to see that cup as half a full and not half empty. That's what we will do by default. But because perhaps we are more molded into this negative uh, fear mode, that tends to override things. So that's why we have to be conscious and say, I'm going to operate and love. But okay, that was my choice. I said, okay, I'm going to 
sit with what's going on at work because that's where I had this stressful situation. And I'm going to, instead of how I normally come, very argumentative, very defensive, I would listen. I would listen to what they have to say. And I will respond in all honesty. Because, and I would not try and say, oh, what I want to certain results, and hence is how I'm going to react. I said, no, I, would, I will be here in a calm mode with positive thoughts, like this positive affirmation that Jenny was sharing. And each day I would, before, because I even had weekly meetings with my, my manager, I would prepare myself. I would do exercise. I would have this positive book I'm reading that's telling me I have all the tools I need. And yes, as a Christian, I did pray. Um, but that prepared me. That prepared me for even when certain things went wrong. So, but I'm just, I'm just not ashamed of you. I just wanted you to realize that we have what it takes to deal with really tough situations because we are created in that way to have our brains that would help us with our thinking because your thoughts tends to lead to your to your words and to your actions so if you have time you want to read this book read it because it really helps um to have the the, the certainty that and maybe sometimes you do need to talk to someone who would help you to be aware of what you even have internally but we do all have this internal gift of operating in a positive loving way as opposed to this fearful mode where you rather run away and have some time to look at the picture because it does reflect what could happen when you go in the fear and the love mode. Um, I think that's what I want to see on this slide. And I think the next one is kind of a final thing. So this book, remember three years ago, Phases of Anxiety, it did say that, look, when you face your stressful and anxious, you're constantly you're anxious about something that and, more, and this is really about when something negative or a stressful situation is going for a prolonged period of time. Prolonged can be whatever it's what you define it, but any, anything that's more than I would say a week, two weeks, that's already really getting long. Um, when you do face it in a, in a way that is rooted on love, you have energy. Actually, being anxious is a, it's a, it's a latent, it's, a, it's energy, you're sitting on energy. And when you use that in a, in a positive way, it does bring um, positive results. I won't share with you in this forum what happened after the meetings I was having with my manager, but because I chose to work in law, on love, really, and also I even had time speaking with, with Vina, it did help me to um, find a balance, find a balance on engaging with this uh, sort of negative space I found myself in. So um, if I would leave you with anything is that anxiety is an energy, it's a source of energy. If you take that and you say, okay, look, I'm going to accept what's going on with me and not let that match stick get burnt, you can use it to transfer that light, that you know, the lit up match stick. You can use it to transfer the light to something else which can have positive results. It's all about the balance. And that's where self-awareness plays a key role. If you're self-aware of what you're feeling, of your emotions, you can tell yourself, okay, I'm not happy. I don't like what I'm feeling here. And you can then say, what am I going to do about it? Am I going to run away or am I going to face it? Am I, and am I going to face it in a fearful mode or in a mode where I'm, you know, with, with, with love, with those positive thoughts coming out in my, my brain, which will help you with your actions. And um, what is balance? Balance, I like this picture, and Vienna has a little bit more complicated, colorful one, but um, balance is having that, is having a kind of awareness of what's going on with yourself, with others and your environment. And of course, it's more complicated than this, but you know, it's, it starts this way, by you asking yourself and checking in with yourself, how am I feeling? How am I, how's this thing going on with me? And how's it going on with those that you, you know, in a relationship with your, with your spouse, with your children, with your colleagues, with friends, um, and with your environment, like I said, because sometimes um, you, are, you are in an environment where it's just toxic, toxic, and you want to check in also with that as well. And it can be that you need someone to help you navigate that. I would uh, leave that to you, you, you. You always can tell when maybe speaking with someone would help. That's really is one of the reasons why we said, let's talk about this because in the conversation, it can be that you say, okay, well, 
maybe I just don't know how to be in tune with myself. Or I like what Nelly said here. She said, I, I go for a running and that helps me to think. And then I um, have to think about myself. Those are all opportunities for self-reflection and self-awareness and to help you sort of strike a balance when you are in this sort of stressful zone and wondering what to do. I think this is the last slide I have, right? Um, yes, we will then go to the creating, creating balance. And maybe Vina, you want to say something before we go to the conversation. Yeah, thank you, Christy. Um, I think uh, after just reflecting on what Christy has shared so far with her own journey, right? We, of course, can go into details of how to respond to stress and anxiety in a very general way. But, you know, she sustains us about linking our stories and lives to our experiences with what we go through. So Christy did go through this scenario with the boss. And I want to, you know, give another example uh, in my life, which is a bit more external example as well. Uh, and an internal response as well. So when I came to the Netherlands, I uh, I had a driving license from India, but I never drove so much. I was I did not practice driving very well. And for the first three years, I did not drive in the Netherlands at all. I just managed with the bike and walking and the tram, right? We have all that possibility here. But at about three year mark, I had this uh, sense in me that I have to get to driving. It's, it is it is a life skill. You need to be driving. You know, what if there is a emergency with my daughter who was just then, uh, you know, five years old or something is wrong and you have to drive somewhere, then this becomes like an obstacle for you. So uh, I wanted to do this and I realized that I have a certain anxiety towards driving itself in general. It was something new. It was something that I was not used to. So a lot of us can recognize that if it's something new, you're walking into a room full of new people or going for a new interview or new situations can be stressful. And uh, what I decided to do is I'm going to get into driving lessons with somebody and let's see where this takes me because I can exchange my license for a Dutch license. That's going to be easy, but that's not going to help me in any way if I don't drive well and safe. And I started lessons and I realized that a lot of emotions were coming up as I was taking these lessons. Um, I had a lot of trigger response. Uh, I saw that it was harder for me than I imagined. It was not only the new roads, it was not only the bike path or the tram path that was causing this, not, not only that, there was more to this anxiety. Uh, there were some days I had to come off the lesson and I was extremely emotional. I was crying and I told myself, okay, this is one more day. Let me try again tomorrow. Let me try again tomorrow. And finally, uh, at the end of, I think, one and a half months or two months, I decided to take the car on my own because I had my Dutch license. And I said, I'm going to drive to the shopping center right here. It was very stressful. I was sweating. My hands were shaky, but I got there. There were no accidents, no, no <laughs> difficulties. I got there and that improved my confidence. I was like, huh, not bad. I did that. And from then on, I started driving to school. From then on, I started driving to a friend's house, you know, and I had to build little by little. And there were some things that I did in that process as well as I realized that listening to music at, while I drove uh, became a, a kind of a relief for me. I could focus on something else. And I, I listened to worship music. So there was one particular song called Prince of Peace that I focused on while I drove. Uh, and today I've been driving for almost four years, I think. And uh, if you ask me, do I have that? Yes, I have that. If I have to drive to a new city in the Netherlands for the very first time, I do have a little bit of stress. But I don't think I have the anxiety in a way that I didn't want to do it. Right. So sometimes maybe your response is I'm anxious about this, this thing. It's a new thing. It's a new project. It's a new change. Uh, but my, uh, my advice to you would be don't leave it at that because you're fearful. Like Christy reminded us, go from a place of love, right? Look at the positive things that can come from it in a response of love. And I think a response of love starts with yourself, starting to love yourself first. You cannot do that for others if you don't love yourself enough and be aware of yourself enough. Um, so 
keep trying small steps are okay if if something makes you anxious think about why i had to go and dig deep later why i had those response i'm not going to share all of that here but it was very very useful in my journey of development to understand the uh, the things that i i had in you know those were silent things that existed in me and this car the whole scenario with the riding the car brought those things out jenny as well explained to us that it has been a journey for her from the time she had the change in life the life change she had so don't be too overwhelmed uh, to and let go of it don't give up that's what i would say keep keep trying at it and even if it is one step even if it is two step celebrate that and keep going it's not something that you cannot handle i want to uh, leave you with that thought and then we would go into this exercise christy can you change to the next slide please so we've been listening to through three beautiful stories and in their own way they created balance in their lives there was there were ups and downs we all have ups and downs we have anxiety i'm sure uh, you know lucy had anxiety when she moved to the netherlands i'm sure nelly had uh, dealt with some stress factors as she managed different things in her life we all have come across this at some point in our lives what we want you to take away from these three weeks of um, you know hearing other stories and thinking about your life is how do you create your own balance and i have put in here an image some of you might know this it's called the wheel of life so there are different areas of our life that can either make our life very balanced or can put us off balance very very quickly um, i want you to look at this picture and choose one or two areas in your life that lacks balance that you want to concentrate on in the next let's say 90 days or six months uh, it doesn't matter it's not like a target or a goal but just you want to focus on those areas and discuss this area like where the where is the lack of balance there is there something specific that you want to focus on and then what changes can you bring in to create balance these three questions we are going to discuss as a group we are going to have two group breakout sessions one with christy and one with me uh, and i would put these questions back there as well can this slide be enlarged Mm, how do I enlarge that? If you close so, uh, notes, the site, uh, you uh, can, okay. yeah, if you cross this on top, there is a cross on top actually. I'm... That okay. took it away, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm also going to uh, probably give you this picture so you can. Mm -hmm. and have it with you i'm just going to share it on chat maybe that's easier and mm -hmm. i will throw in the questions yeah, on the breakout room so you have yeah. uh, in a minute i'm going to share that my setting so um if you just maybe take one minute because i see we also come to the hour but we really wanted to have a conversation with you so just one minute to go through these three questions and um have a look at the wheel i think now um Vina has yeah. placed it in the chat and then when we go into the breakout session we will have i would have to say it's going to be one minute for each person to then sort of give a response to these three questions and the reason why we're doing this is because we feel you know we've come in here we would love that we all go with at least one or two intentional items we want to work on we want to address that would really help us to create balance because that's how we believe we can then really stay afloat coming post whatever the next six months is going to be like of this year 